Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the National Press Theater. My name is Janice Dixon, and I'm moderating this press conference. Uh, from my uh, right and moving down, we're starting with uh, Michael Mostein, the CEO of Benai Brith Canada. Uh, beside him is David Mattis, Senior Legal Counsel for Benai Brith Canada. Avida Montanafar, the uh, President of the Council of Iranian Canadians. And on the far end, Reza Benai, Chair of Justice 88. So you can uh, take it from here, please. Thank you. Before we begin today's press conference, we'd like to take a moment of silence in memory of all those who lost their lives in the missile strike on Flight 752, as well as the 1,500 Iranian protesters murdered in the streets of Iran. Benebrith Canada is committed to combating anti-Semitism, injustice, and hatred in all its forms as the grassroots voice of the Jewish community. Today, B'nai Canada, together with the Council of Iranian Canadians and Justice 88, is renewing its call for the Government of Canada to designate Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, the IRGC, as a terrorist entity. We are today formally requesting the Government of Canada to complete this long overdue listing process within the next 30 days. The IRGC must be immediately listed as a terrorist group, and no further delay is acceptable. The events of the past 10 days have focused attention on the threat from Iranian Islamist organizations that foment and support terrorism. There is a need to recognize and confront this long-standing threat. Current circumstances do not detract from what we know about the threat and what action must be taken in response. Last April, on the heels of the historic United States decision to label the entirety of the IRGC as a terrorist group, Benebrith Canada urged the Government of Canada to follow suit. We are not deterred from pursuing this objective, together with the majority of Iranian Canadians. We said at the time, Canada must swiftly list the IRGC as a terrorist entity, as it has previously committed and as it did with Hezbollah in 2002. We were referring to when Benebrith successfully pressured the Canadian government to ban the radical terror group. We have just met with senior officials from Public Safety Canada to press our case. Our senior legal counsel, David Matus, will speak to our legal foundation and the parallels between action against Hezbollah and what is required to deal with the challenge from the IRGC. The principal objective of the IRGC, a branch of Iran's military, is to fuel and fund terrorism. It serves as a constant threat to the safety and security of civilians to the region, to Israel, and to Canada and Canadian interests. Tasked with upholding the brutal Islamist dictatorship and supporting its terror proxies, such as Hezbollah and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the IRGC is a quintessential example of an influential, of an influential group with clear, radical, and violent intentions. It also has a long history of acting on those intentions. The Quds Force, which serves as the IRGC's external operations branch, is already a designated terror entity in Canada. It is of grave concern to both the grassroots Jewish and Iranian communities in Canada that only one segment of what is, in effect, a state-sponsored terrorist army is recognized as a terrorist group. Benebrith Canada recently prepared a mandate letter for the Minister of Foreign Affairs that said, you should make a commitment to not re-engage Iran diplomatically unless it commits to fully recognizing Israel's right to exist, to refrain from supporting destabilizing groups such as Hezbollah, and to not using any dip diplomatic presence in Canada to frustrate the interests of the Iranian-Canadian community and Canada's Jewish community. Constraining Iran will require a street strategic and comprehensive policy in cooperation with our international partners. We urge Canada to exert leadership on this file and to take immediate steps to articulate, cooperate in, and help implement such a policy. As leaders representing Canada's Jewish and Iranian communities, we are passionate about supporting democracy and peace in Iran so that its policies coincide with Canadian values and charter rights. Our continuing efforts at are a uniting force for both Jews and Iranians, as not only does the IRGC frequently target Jews while continually threatening to eradicate Israel, it, is all, it also harshly punishes and harasses Iranians who oppose the Islamist regime 
and are passionate about having the right to common constitutional practices and ensuring equality is returned to Iran. We will continue to press the Government of Canada until the final decision to list the entire IRGC as a terror group is made. The safety of our communities and all Canadians depends on it. I will now turn the floor to Benebrith Canada's Senior Legal Counsel, David Matus. Thanks. Uh, there's a couple of points I wanted to add to what uh, Michael Mostyn has said. One is I point out that the Parliament has already passed a resolution in June 2018 uh, with 248 votes in favour, including the Liberal Caucus, which uh, supported the listing of uh, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps as a terrorist group uh, under the Criminal Code. And uh, the position of the government since then has been that uh, the request has been under detailed consideration according to the normal rules. But we're now 19 months since that resolution, so it's really time to come to a conclusion uh, on this issue. I point out also that in 2001, the Government of Canada listed the uh, military wings of Hamas and Hezbollah uh, as terrorist entities, but not uh, Hezbollah and Hamas as a whole. We as an organization asked for the listing of the organizations uh, as a whole, uh, and uh, in 2002, the government did list those organizations as a whole. And, and basically, the reasoning was uh, that uh, there's a close connection between the organizations as a whole and, and their terrorist wings. And, and that the organizations as a whole were involved in or associated with terrorist activities. One can say that as much today about the uh, Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and its uh, subcomponent Quds Force. Uh, the Quds uh, the Force and the IRGC uh, are closely connected and, and, and uh, the IRGC as a whole is involved in or associated with terrorist activities. And one needs only look at uh, the pronouncements of the RAGC uh, about Israel, that it should be wiped off the map, uh, that uh, revenge will be in, in exacted against Haifa. Right now, we've got an anomalous situation where if the Canadians cannot send a rocket or, or a missile to Iran, but they can send money to, uh, to uh, Iran, which can be used to buy a, a rocket or, or a missile. And, the, uh, the, also, for the Justice of Victims of Terrorism Act, if, if a terrorism act is committed by the Quds Force, uh, Canadians can get compensation. If it's committed by the IRGC, but not the Quds Force, Canadians cannot get compensation. So we have these uh, legal anomalies, and uh, uh, we are asking now to make a decision on this. That by 19 months, it's already too long. Thank you. As you all know, uh, at the beginning of this year, the commander of Quds Force has been taken down by the um, United States military action. And consequently, today, as the Islamist regime schemes to revenge the slain IRGC uh, commander, Qasem Soleimani, uh, the IRGC poses a greater risk than ever before to Canada's Iranian and Jewish communities. Uh, therefore, this makes the designation of the IRGC as a terrorist entity an urgent matter. Comme vous le savez tous, uh, au début de cette année, le commandant des forces Quds a été éliminé par des forces militaires américaines. Et par conséquent, aujourd'hui, alors que le régime islamiste uh, tente de venger le commandant Rassem Soleimani, um, uh, le corps des gardiens de la révolution islamique uh, pose un plus grand risque uh, que jamais pour les communautés iraniennes et juives du Canada. Cela rend la désignation uh, du CGRI uh, comme une entité terroriste encore plus urgente. Considering that the IRGC is not a military force, not only a military force that has turned the Islamic Republic into a state sponsor of terrorism, but also at that the IRGC is, an act, is active fin financially and has control over a very large scale of the Iranian economy, we believe that the Canadian government should monitor uh, more extensively the IRGC's activity and in, in order to ensure that their agents and proxies do not have a presence in Canada. 
considérant le fait que le CGRI n'est pas seulement une force militaire, mais aussi qu'elle contrôle une grande échelle, en grande échelle l'économie iranienne, nous croyons que le gouvernement canadien devrait surveiller plus en détail et de plus, plus près les activités du CGRI afin de s'assurer que les agents et les mandataires ne sont pas présents au Canada. The issue of IRGC has become even more concerning as we just witnessed the shutdown of the passenger plane. This terrorist action, intentionally or not, executed by the IRGC, emphasized and confirmed once more the terrorist nature of this organization that has no respect for civilian lives. They should have closed the Iranian airspace, but they didn't. Another aspect of this designation would be taking preventive measures to limit the IRGC and its agents' access to advanced nuclear-related technology as the Islamic Republic has, has been pursuing its nuclear weapons uh, ambitions and announced recently that they have no longer any intention to recognize any limits on the operation, operational uh, aspects of their nuclear program. We believe that Canada must take all measures, economic and diplomatic, to deter the IRGC's ambitions for nuclear weapons. Un autre aspect de cette designation consisterait en des mesures préventives visant à limiter l'accès du CGRI et de, et, et de ses agents et mandataires aux technologies nucléaires avancées, comme la République islamique poursuit toujours ses ambitions en matière d'armes nucléaires. L'organisation Justice 88, est, qui est une organisation canadienne, a été créée immédiatement euh, après le projet de loi du juin 2013, euh, qui a été adapté à, à l'unanimité par le Parlement canadien pour reconnaître le massacre des prisonniers politiques en Iran au cours de l'été 88 comme crime contre l'humanité. N'oublions pas que les interrogateurs et l'équipe d'exécution de ce massacre étaient tous des membres de, des corps des gardiens de la, de la Révolution islamique. Depuis longtemps, le corps des gardiens de la Révolution islamique a été soit directement, soit par l'intermédiaire de ces forces paramilitaires appelées Basij, un outil de répression sévère du peuple iranien. La liste de leurs crimes est longue que ce soit la répression brutale des manifestants iraniens ou l'arrestation et la torture des ressortissants étrangers et des personnes ayant la double nationalité et des, euh, pour de vagues accusations de sécurité nationale. Nous avons des ex deux exemples de citoyens canadiens qui ont été victimes des agressions démesurées de cette organisation. Madame Zahra Kazemi, euh, photojournaliste, qui a été tuée sous torture en prison, et quand vous Seyed Emami, qui est décédé dans des circonstances mystérieuses alors qu'il était détenu par le corps des gardiens de la Révolution islamique l'année dernière. The Iranian Canadian community is concerned increasingly by the presence and activities of the IRGC agents and proxies in Canada. Nous pensons que le gouvernement libéral a eu raison de voter en faveur du projet de loi introduit par les conservateurs en 2018, visant à ajouter le corps des gardiens de la Révolution islamique à la liste des terroristes étrangers au Canada. Si elle, était, si elle est mise en œuvre, une telle liste augmenterait considérablement la pression sur la République islamique et avertirait des individus et des entreprises de graves accusations de terrorisme qu'ils rencontrent qu'ils rencontreraient au Canada euh, s'ils engageaient en toute relation pouvant aider le corps des gardiens de la révolution islamique. Merci pour votre attention. My name is Reza Benai, chair of the Justice 88. Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corp IRGC, as shown in its title, is a military organization for serving the objectives of the Islamic Revolution. Uh, the IRGC is as old as the Islamic regime. There is no mention of Iran in the IRGC title. The IRGC was, a, was solely created to protect and expand the political Islam and extremism globally, specifically its Shia branch. 
No wonder that Ayatollah Ali Khamenei is frequently referred to as the so-called universal leader of the Muslims. Therefore, the universal ambitions of the IRGC is rooted in its global mission statement. During the last four decades, I, the IRGC has evolved into an enormous multifaceted mafia organization while acting as a shadow government with no accountability. In fact, there is no area of activity in Iran that the IRGC has not forced its involvement. Today, you can visibly see the actual presence of the IRGC in all levels of the Iranian military, civil aviation, shipping and transportation network, all petroleum-related industry, petrochemical and gas industry, mining and main industrial fields, banking and financing, telecommunication and internet, radio and TV stations, press and public media, arts and culture, filming and music industry, sports and gaming industry, and the entire governmental offices in different ministries, Islamic parliament, judicial system, even the clerical schools, and most notably, a complete independent intelligence department with its own prisons and interrogators. The appointment of the IRGC officers as ambassadors and embassy staff has been a routine practice. And by doing this, the espionage on Iranian diaspora and assassination of the Iranian dissidents in Europe and bombing of Amaya Jewish, uh, Jewish Center in Argentina are being facilitated. Apart from these, the IRGC is heavily involved in drug trafficking, a smuggling of all kinds of cigarettes, alcoholic beverages, and money laundry. There is this famous quote from ex-president Mahmoud Ahmadinejad calling the IRGC staff as a smuggling brothers. The extraterritorial terrorist activities of the IRGC and its proxies such as Hezbollah in Lebanon and other Shia terrorist organizations in Iraq in Syria, Afghanistan, and Yemen has convinced the Canadian government to finally list Quds Force, which is the clandestine branch of the IRGC responsible for the operations outside of Iran as a terrorist organization. But let's not forget that Quds Force is only a branch of the IRGC, and its funding, personnel, and training is supplied by the IRGC. So it is very awkward to only list a division of a corporation as a terrorist entity. Today, as we speak, millions of Iranians in the streets of hundreds of cities are publicly chanting, Soleimani is a killer and Khamenei is a killer too. IRGC murders and leader approves, or shameless IRGC let go of Iran. The Iranian-Canadian community expects, expects Canadian government to pay attention to these real voices and demands coming out of Iran and respond accordingly by listing the IRGC as a terrorist organization. Last, last night on CBC National News, a video from Iran was played showing the students in one of the universities refusing to walk over the, over the United States and Israeli flag. Contrary to four decades of warmongering, hatred, and hostage-taking policies of the regime and the IRGC, the Iranian youth are displaying respect, love, and friendship for the United States and Israel. Millions of Iranians who have been hostage of the Islamist regime and its brutal IRGC forces would like to have a peaceful and friendly relations with Israel and United States and Canada. Therefore, now is the time for Canada to respond to Iranian people by listing the IRGC as a terrorist organization in order, to in order to express its solidarity with the brave Iranians. Last November, more than 1,500 protesters were shot to death in the streets of Iran by, by the IRGC, Basij, and its plainclothes militia forces. Thousands have been arrested and are currently under torture. Listing of the IRGC as a terrorist entity will weaken this notorious organization and will send a positive message to the Iranians in pursuit of freedom and democracy. Back in June 2018, a motion for the, list, for the listing of the IRGC was approved by a substantial majority in the House of Commons. 
the public safety minister should heed the will of the parliament and list the IRGC without further delay. That's the least that our government can do against the IRGC, which is responsible for so much misery in Iran and throughout the Middle East. Our organization, Justice 88, was established immediately after the June 2013 motion of the House of Commons in recognizing the mass murder of the political prisoners in Iran in the summer of 1988 as crimes against humanity. Let's not forget that interrogators and execution squads of that massacre were all the IRGC members. Listing the IRGC as a terrorist organization would be the most justifiable action by the Canadian government against those who commit crimes against humanity. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna start with uh, Philip Vincent uh, Foisy of Radio Canada and then Mike Blanchfield of Canadian Press. Uh, oui, bonjour, je vais juste... Uh, Hello. Bonjour, vous m'entendez bien? Vous parlez français tous les deux? <coughs> Parfait, ça va être une question pour vous deux en français. Uh, Est-ce que vous pouvez m'expliquer simplement Qu'est-ce que ça va changer concrètement si le Canada décidait d'ajouter cet organisme-là comme un groupe terroriste? Concrètement, pour que les gens comprennent, qu'est-ce que ça change demain matin si le Canada va de l'avant? Euh, premièrement, euh, si on veut faire une poursuite contre l'IRGC, on peut le faire, ou contre l'Iran, pour, pour ce que l'IRGC a fait, on peut le faire. Maintenant, on ne peut pas le faire. Euh, et s'il y a les dommages, euh, on peut les récupérer, mais euh, euh, on ne peut pas maintenant, euh, on ne peut pas les récupérer, mais euh, après, on peut le faire. C'est une chose. Une autre chose, on ne peut pas donner de l'argent à l'IRGC. Maintenant, on peut le faire. Et, et si on donne de l'argent à l'IRGC, on... on il peut acheter des missiles, et des armements, et des, des moyens de, de, de faire la terre. Et ça, c'est un changement concret aussi. Oui, euh, effectivement, euh, comme euh, euh, ça a été dit, euh, l'argent euh, qui, qui arriverait dans les mains de, 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 de cette organisation va jamais servir le peuple iranien. Euh, L'argent que l'administration du président Obama a, a, a rendu à, à la République islamique a été euh, euh, utilisé euh, à, à créer plus d'horreur de, et de, de, de mmh. euh, fonder plus de, 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 de groupes mili euh, militaires euh, iraniens en Syrie euh, pour garder... Euh, euh, le, le dictateur Bachar Assad en, en pouvoir et euh, le peuple iranien n'a jamais vu euh, un dollar de, de ces cette, de, de cette 150 euh, milliards de, de dollars qu'ils ont, qu ont reçus donc euh, tout l'argent euh, est, est, euh, est, est dépensé pour ce genre de, de choses et pour créer euh, des horreurs et la guerre euh, partout par, euh, par les gardiens de, de, de la révolution islamique. Et, Donc, euh, les, les, les mettre en, les, en tant que... Euh, les désigner à, en tant que terroristes, euh, donc, euh, personne ne pourra faire... Euh, des, des, avoir des relations économiques avec eux. Donc, euh, d'où vous voulez qu'ils qu qu trouvent de l'argent s'ils si, si, si n'ont pas de relations économiques avec l'étranger donc, euh, c'est très, très important qu'ils euh, qu aient, euh, euh, pour, pour couper les activités terroristes, vous devez couper leurs moyens financiers. Vous n'avez pas le choix. C'est la seule façon de, de, de les mettre euh, au coin et, et, et ils n'auront euh, plus le pouvoir de, de terroriser le monde. Et, et je dirais aussi que maintenant, quand, quand on vous a dit, il y a les manifestations contre l'IRGC. Et si on, on les met dans la liste, c'est la solidarité, solidarité avec les manifestations. Je ne pensais pas que ça peut envenimer la relation canado-iranienne qui est déjà pas très bonne. L'ambassade est fermée des deux côtés, les liens oui, diplomatiques et, et, sont fermés. Et, et, on a vu à quel point ça peut être compliqué, <rire> par exemple, d'envoyer 
des enquêteurs, que ce soit du BST ou d'autres enquêteurs sur le terrain. Donc, on essayait du côté du gouvernement Trudeau de tendre la main, de reconstruire cette relation-là. Est-ce que ça ne va pas envenimer la chose davantage? Oui, mais… Qu'est-ce euh, qu euh, que vous voulez qu'ils qu en vominent de plus que, que ce que c'est maintenant? Euh, vous croyez que vous pouvez avoir une, une, une conversation euh, comme vous et moi, euh, on est en train de l'avoir avec les terroristes? Euh, eux, ils, ils, ils sont pas… Euh, ils ne veulent pas vous parler. Ça ne les intéresse pas de vous parler. Euh, Madame euh, euh, Zahra Kwasemi euh, a été tuée sous torture euh, or qu'elle avait reçu toutes les, les autorisations en tant que journaliste pour aller en Iran et préparer un film sur les, les, la, la condition des femmes iraniennes. Donc euh, la première chose qu'elle a vue, elle, elle a été arrêtée, elle a été euh, euh, mise en prison et elle a, elle a été tuée sous torture. Euh, avec un coup de pied dans la tête euh, par, par le, euh, les autorités iraniennes. Euh, donc, euh, si vous croyez que vous allez parler avec ces gens, euh, vous vous trompez euh, vraiment. Et, et je dirais aussi, avec Kazemi, il y avait les relations diplomatiques avec, euh, entre Canada et l'Iran. Euh, C'était le seul moment où le Canada et, et l'Iran avaient de très, très bonnes euh, relations économiques et, 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 et euh, diplomatiques. Et je dirais aussi, il faut faire un choix entre le gouvernement et, et, et les gens qui sont pour la démocratie et pour le Canada. Il faut euh, prendre à côté des gens pour la démocratie et pas de, dans le, sur le côté de, de, de la régime. Et si je peux juste ajouter un autre point à ça, l'Iranienne embassy était fermée au Canada pour des raisons de sécurité concernées parce que Internationally, there has been historically targeting of Iranian dissidents, of Jews, of other minority groups by the Iranians using their embassies. And the embassy in Canada was closed in 2012 for very valid public safety concerns. So our communities are very happy that, that, that's, that the embassies are closed today and we're in a situation where we are a little bit safer as Canadians. Um, and um, it should not take away from the valid security risks of the IRGC, and the IRGC needs to be listed as a terrorist group. Just to add one more point to that is that, uh, if you recall, at that, at that time, just prior to the closure of the embassy, the head of the cultural section was the brother of uh, Ali Larijani, who is the uh, speaker of the Iranian parliament, and they are IRGC-related staff, <laughs> for your information. Okay, uh, Mike Blanchfield will be next, and then um, Annie Bergeron Oliver, CTV. Yeah, Mr. Matus, can you uh, reiterate in English um, the need to, the legal need that you just said a moment ago about why the why the guards need to be listed so that you can sue? I need to hear that in English. And also, can you um, answer me uh, if they do, if the government were to list them this afternoon, would you see any legal hurdles? But the fact that uh, you know the retroactivity principle, let's say, how would you? Would there be a legal impediment there for you? The, uh, uh, well, first of all, uh, in terms of your first question, uh, uh, there's some immediate legal consequences to listing in the sense that the, uh, the way the Justice for Victims of Terrorism Act works is you can, uh, it gives an exception to the uh, State Immunity Act uh, for a couple of states, uh, uh, Iran and Syria, but only uh, for acts, terrorist acts committed by listed terrorist entities. And uh, the listed terrorist entity under uh, the relevant uh, entity under the Justice for Victims of Terrorism Act is the Quds Force, but not the IRGC as a whole. So we get this anomalous situation if Quds Force uh, commits a terrorist act, the government of Iran can be sued and has, in fact, been sued in Canada and compensation has been received. But if, if the terrorist act I is committed uh, by the IRGC but not the Quds Force, suit is not possible. And, and indeed, uh, if you went to court, Iran in theory, uh, for a compensation for victims and terror, Iran in theory today could go to court and say, well, this act was, a terrorist act was committed by the RGC, but not the Quds Force, and therefore you can't get damages, which is kind of, a, it's a ridiculous defense, but it's open according to the current law and, and shouldn't be. So, so that's one consequence. And the other uh, a practical consequence that we've been talking about is, is the issue of money, uh, that uh, you can't, 
you can't send arms to Iran, but you can send money to Iran, to the RGC, and, and they can use it to buy arms, including uh, uh, arms dedicated, uh, dedicated to, to terrorist acts, like improvised explosive devices or rockets or missiles and so on. So now in terms of uh, retroactivity, that's something that would have to uh, probably be uh, litigated through the courts. Uh, I've seen opinions that it would have a retroactive impact. Uh, the I, I can't say that I've developed a, a firm opinion on that myself. Uh, it, the, it, it's, it, it's, it's something that the, it, one would have to look at in terms of the wording of the act, and uh, my guess is that it, it would be a legal issue the courts would have to decide. And this is a quick follow. Uh, another legal issue has been uh, well, it's a broad legal issue. I mean, how do you even collect, should you succeed? Where are the Iranian assets that you would uh, collect us from, and h how would you get the, the payday anyway? Well, that's in fact happened because Iran has been uh, sued, and and there were assets, uh, and and uh, the the uh, assets were seized and they were sold, and it was seven million dollars realized. The, uh, I mean, it's obviously it has to be uh, assets within the, the, the jurisdiction of uh, the uh, Canada, and it also has to be uh, assets that are not subject to diplomatic immunity or sovereign immunity, but. Uh, the assets that were seized were cultural property, uh, and my understanding was that they didn't fall within that diplomatic immunity exception. And it, it may well be that it may be difficult to collect in, in, in the future. Uh, the and uh, I, I wouldn't say that it, it has um, only a monetary value. I think it uh, th this sort of change of law. I think it has a a, uh, a statement of where we are as a country and and. And our concerns about the RHEC, uh, that I think uh, to a certain extent what we're talking about here is not money but principle. And, 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 and the principle is a, a terrorist is a terrorist, a terrorist. And you can't say, well, if they're doing it through this agency, they are a terrorist. And if they're doing it through that agency, they're not. Uh, Annie, Bergeron Oliver, you're next. <laughs> Hi, so this is a question for both groups. Obviously, Canada right now is in a very difficult situation as we do need assistance from Iran in terms of re repatriation of the bodies of the victims, but also in terms of getting the visas to be able to go into the country. I'm wondering whether you think that now is the right time to be listing the IRGC as a terrorist group, given this sort of precarious and difficult situation that Canada is in with Iran, and whether you fear that doing that right now might have any kind of consequences that would make it more difficult for Canada to complete its investigation and to get those Canadians home? Well, I mean, my read of the situation is, I mean, all, uh, what the Iranians are going to be most concerned about, what the Iranian government is going to be m most concerned about is not what Canada thinks, but w about what its own population thinks. And, and right now, that population is, is very hostile to the IRGC, and we see it on the streets because, I mean, the, the IRGC was responsible and acknowledges responsibility for the shooting down of that plane. Uh, and uh, the, the, the government may wish to distance itself from the IRGC uh, because of th that situation. And so I don't think we can assume that listing the IRGC will necessarily uh, cause problems for Canada uh, in terms of dealing with the, 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 the Ukrainian uh, jet plane downing. The other thing I would add to that, just from the B'nai B'rith perspective, is that, um, in our opinion, the IRGC should have already been listed by now. So this really shouldn't uh, have an impact at all because um, it's been 19 months since the motion passed in the House of Commons. There are separate commitments and obligations that the government of Iran is under, under the uh, Civil Aviation Act, um, to require um, the, the company and other countries involved, and uh, we would expect, of course, that Iran would honor its its various international commitments, and uh, that's unrelated to the IRGC. The other point is there's never a perfect time. There's never a perfect time to list the IRGC, but the best time is now. Um, and as, as David mentioned and everyone else from the floor mentioned, this is also a matter of, of principle. There are Iranian protesters who are risking their lives on the streets of Iran, and Canada needs to show them support. And, um, and who are we siding with, the regime or the protesters? And just to add another point to the uh, comments, uh, we, should not, we should never forget that the Iranian regime and the IRGC are only uh, responding when there is pressure on them. This is the history of this regime and its uh, infrastructure. 
If you look back at the time of Iran-Iraq war, it, uh, Iran only uh, uh, gave up to the resolution 598 after the international pressure. Right now, even Canadian staff are being uh, picked up individually. So there were about, about 10 uh, of, our, of our Canadian government staff, and only three visas have been issued. So unless you apply pressure, you're not going to be able to actually find out the truth. So that's the only way, and that's why the Iranians are in the streets, to put pressure so that they can actually get the truth out of this, uh, this thing, you know. There are a lot of people right now who are currently talking about reestablishing diplomatic relationships and reopening the embassy that we have here in Ottawa, saying that, you know, in order to have a discussion with Iran, you need to have those types of ties open. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on, on that idea of reestablishing diplomatic ties. Okay, well, the, the dialogue and diplomatic relations are with a country that actually uh, respects the dialogue and the principles of the dialogue. You know, you don't send a terrorist under the cover of the diplomats and expect to, to establish dialogue and try to have a, 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 an understanding point between your, country, your government and the rest of the world. The diplomatic relations, unless Iranian government submits and succumbs to the international principles, there is no way to establish dialogue. You, 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 know, you, you, you engage with people who actually engage civilized, you know, in a way, you know, they don't shoot the civil planes, they don't kill unarmed uh, protesters in the streets. How can you establish dialogue with this kind of mentality? Yeah, I, I would, well, uh, 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 repeat or agree with what Michael Mostyn has said, that uh, the embassy relations, uh, the embassy when it was here posed a problem, a threat, uh, a danger to the Iranian Jewish communities. The Canadian embassy moved from Iran at the time the Justice for Victims of uh, a Terrorism Act was proclaimed and put in force for the safety of the Canadian embassy. And I've seen a, uh, a former ambassador call for the reestablishment of relations, but at the same time repealing the Justice for Victims of Terrorism Act, uh, because uh, it, it, the logic of that withdrawal was the connection between the two. And uh, there should be justice for victims of terrorism. Uh, the, uh, the notion that we should abandon that concept or, or that principle, it's, it's a price not worth paying. Uh, the, uh, it, I, I think we have to be concerned about terrorism uh, and, and, and uh, provide uh, compensation or justice for victims, uh, try to stop it, uh, and, and it may well be that uh, combating terrorism is going to have some adverse consequences, but uh, on the whole, I think the combat against terrorism has to be given priority. And, and just adding again to what David said and, and repeating earlier, the increased tensions in the region is even more reason why there is even a further public safety risk today than even in 2012 when it was closed for valid reasons. So I, I wouldn't understand uh, why uh, Canadians should have their lives in jeopardy. Uh, one more thing, excuse me. But today, we are witnessing that Nazanin Zaghari Radcliffe is still in Iranian prisons, and it's being detained by IRGC people. You know? British embassy is open in Tehran, and the British diplomats are unable to free this uh, poor lady mm -hmm. and join her with her daughter in, in England. And uh, so this tells you that uh, establishing dialogue with a regime that does not respect even the rights of the dual citizens, you know, how, how in the world are you going to uh, achieve anything with this kind of mentality? Okay, unless there's any more questions, we'll, uh, we'll leave it there. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.